Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jessie Leons. This edition's top stories. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney prepares to lay the estimates of revenue and expenditure amid the challenges of COVID-19. The OECS launches a series of activities celebrating its 40th anniversary. And the Ministry of Health and Wellness to begin vaccinating homebound individuals. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, Honorable Alan Chasney, will on Tuesday, 16th March 2021, present St. Lucia's estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2021-2022. This will follow the opening of the sixth session of the 11th Parliament on Tuesday morning, where members of the House of Assembly will meet at 10 a.m. and members of the Senate will meet at 10 30 a.m., after which both houses will be in joint session to receive the throne speech from His Excellency, the Governor General, Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack. The Standing Finance Committee will meet in closed session at 2 p.m. to review the estimates of revenue and expenditure, following which at 4 p.m., the Prime Minister will lay the estimates before the House of Assembly. The Prime Minister says the estimates of revenue and expenditure and the subsequent appropriation bill are being presented at a difficult time. However, government has been able to maneuver the tough environment brought on by COVID-19. Government, he noted, has not defaulted on loans, continues to pay salaries and meet other obligations. Nevertheless, there is tremendous uncertainty about how quickly the economy will recover from the impact of COVID-19. Government has had to give a lot of concessions to small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and large businesses um, to offset the losses. And so we've absorbed those losses by um, not charging taxes on, on a lot of issues. So what government's final um, revenue position is going to be is still very much up in the air. Um, but what we can say is that the, a continuation of, of building a new St. Lucia, um, continuation of fixing the infrastructure, a continuation of making ourselves competitive. I mean, all this week we were talking about the Headquarters Act, the residency mm -hmm. program, um, uh, uh, and expediting our financial sector. The orange economy, we have a tremendous amount of confidence in it. So there are there is an allocation um, for events. We're hoping that we can see at least one event come back this budgetary, budgetary year. Um, but we feel very strong that Carnival will come back strong next year so there will be an event probably to celebrate something as well as being a launching pad to promote our events for um, 2022. A Prime Minister speaking there during the GIS COVID-19 year in review production. Honorable Shastney emphasized government's determination to build a new St. Lucia as he noted the advancing of several projects including home porting in Viewfort, the National Health Insurance, St. Jude's Hospital and the expansion of the social safety net in providing assistance to the vulnerable. The uh, social net program we're going to be putting in which will be much broader than it has been before. So the continuation of infrastructural building and infrastructure is not just about roads and buildings but it's about institutional strengthening, um, about uh, policy strengthening, our police officers, the police headquarters, um, the continuation of the digital cameras, the CSI unit, the crime scenes investigation unit that we're going to be opening up. We just got new engines for the Marine Police, the going to the border control. Um, so as I said to you, this year really is a continuation of a lot of, 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 of the things that we've already started. And despite COVID, is to give solutions the assurance that we have made the fiscal space available and the, and the human resources available and continue to prioritize those programs. The debate on the estimates of expenditure will begin on Wednesday, March 17, 2021 from 9 a.m. Please note that in keeping with the protocols established by the authorities for the management of the COVID-19 crisis, members of the public will not be allowed in the chamber gallery during the sittings. The public can view the live proceedings on the National Television Network, Channel 122, that is NTN, as well as the Government of St. Lucia Facebook and the YouTube platform. For. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is looking to make good on gains made over the last month in the fight against COVID-19. The national vaccination campaign is in full swing and the curve of infection from the third wave has flattened. 
there is a renewed focus to avoid another surge following a holiday observance. As of 13th March, 18,488 residents in St. Lucia have received their first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George is elated by the progress made in the journey to herd immunity, however, stressed the importance of continued adherence to the protocols. COVID 19 continues to loom over the population following the island's third wave at the start of 2021. Active cases registered at 14th March stood at 203. We still have too many active cases within the community. We still have over 100 active cases within the community. And a lot of our risks for introduction are still there. So the, the vaccine, it really um, provides a light in the tunnel, at the end of the tunnel. Um, it is one of the most cost-effective public health um, measures. So we're extremely grateful to have it available to, to the public and we will continue to appeal to the public, like Nurse Shabati said, to take the vaccine. However, um, we have received just the first, most of our persons who have taken the vaccine is only the first dose that they have received so far. So it is important and I will continue to appeal to the public that we continue to maintain the, the measures that are in place. Dr. George was speaking during the COVID-19 Year in Review broadcast of the NTN on the weekend. In retrospect, she admits that the post-holiday case surge in January might have been avoided had it been managed differently. When I think back, we should have limited the number of persons who came in or, or keep everyone within an institutional quarantine because persons coming in during the Christmas season, which traditionally we know is a time of festivities where there's a lot of family um, activity happening, a lot of community activity happening. And it did contribute significantly to our third wave, which we saw. Um, to ask persons to come in realistically during the Christmas time and to think that they were going to stay home for 14 days it, it, it was not realistic. Lessons for the future. Officials are taking precautions for the next holiday observance. An extended curfew is among restrictions for the upcoming Easter weekend. From 2nd to 5th April, it will run from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily. Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy reminds the public. Coming into the Easter, Easter um, weekend, actually this, um, the curfew would be brought back to... 7 7 p.m. and we are expecting that everyone would observe the protocols and one of the um, protocols being that there should be no um, socializing there should be no beach parties no um, river river line no dances and so on um, we no loud music permit we are not ready for that yet and social events are not approved mass crowd events are not approved so we want a level of responsible behavior. The police cannot be everywhere and in every community. So we really want at the level of the community that we make responsible choices for our safety at this point. Meanwhile, the COVID-19 vaccination drive will cater to individuals who are homebound due to age or immobility. Therefore, the Ministry of Health and Wellness will not be administering the vaccine at vaccination sites around the island. Appointments must be made for these individuals at their nearest community wellness center for vaccination at home. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States OECS Commission hosted the official launch of the 40th anniversary of the OECS, presenting planned activities to commemorate the June 18, 2021 milestone. More from Herma DeMac. The virtual launch included addresses by the heads of the organization, the unveiling of the theme, Onward with Integration for Progress and Sustainability a logo to commemorate the momentous milestone, and a calendar of activities which inculcates the areas of education, youth, theatre, and community. Addressing the launch, Prime Minister of Dominica and Chairman of the OECS, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, highlights some of the achievements of the organization since its inception in 1981. The Eastern Caribbean dollar, which for the last 37 years has maintained a fixed and immutable exchange rate with the U.S. dollar 
and is now the strongest and most stable currency in the Caribbean. The freedom of movement of people that allows the citizens of member states to travel without hindrance or restriction to work, to play, to study, to visit friends, or to relocate, to follow carnival, or to follow a crusade. With those rights came contingent rights that empower our families to relocate with us and enable our children to attend schools and to obtain scholarships. Also speaking at the launch was Dr. Didacus Jules, Director General of the OECS. He explains the requirements for future success of the organization. Importantly, our heads of government need to maintain a very strong solidarity among themselves. And we've seen this happen every time we have faced a crisis, our heads have rallied from the hurricanes to the pandemic, we've seen that solidarity being expressed. Dr. Jules says listening to the needs of the people of member states is critical. It is very important that the OECS communications involve not just sending messages out, but listening to the voices and not just listening in events like this, but also having structured mechanisms for, the, for, for getting feedback, for receiving queries, for um, soliciting suggestions and recommendations. And right now we have over 40 virtual working groups involving persons in the private sector, civil society, in government ministries, across different portfolios and sectors, engaging in discussions on different aspects of regional integration. Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, Timothy Antoine, congratulates the OECS on 40 years of exemplary service. At this juncture, the OECS Com Commission and the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank enjoy excellent relations. Our most recent collaboration was in supporting the vaccine rollout in our member countries. So, on behalf of Team ECCB, and on my own behalf, I extend again heartiest congratulations and wish you every success for your next 40 years and beyond. One exciting component of the OECS's 40th anniversary is OECS for Me, a Chakapesh production which will be aired on the 12th and 30th of June on the social media pages of the OECS. From the Government Information Service, Hilma Dimak reporting. Still on the regional front, the CARICOM Council for a Human and Social Development, COSOD, has committed to working with the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, to preserve the integrity and validity of the regional examinations that are scheduled for the period June to July 2021. Tusenkine English Francis of CARICOM Newstime reports. The COSOD met on February 26th and March 1st and reached several agreements on the administration of the 2021 regional examinations, including that the examinations will be held in their original formats. That is, the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination CAPE, the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate, CSEC, papers 1 and 2 and 3 for private candidates, and for the Caribbean Certificate of Secondary Level Competence, that is CCLSC, papers 1 and 2. Chairman of the COSA, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, Minister of Education of the Bahamas, told a post-meeting media briefing that after careful analysis and with consideration for the well-being of the students, the COSA also extended the deadline by which students should signal their intention to defer the sitting of the exams. Candidates now have until the 1st of May to do so. The COSOD expresses its appreciation to the CXC for its efforts to ensure the smooth transition and matriculation of the region's youth to the world of work and post-secondary or tertiary education. Recognizing the impact of the 19 pandemic on equitable access and the continuity of learning, in their deliberations made every effort to advocate for concessions to be provided. Thus, the ministers endorsed the recommendation to provide additional time for in-person teaching and learning to complete the school-based assessment, close teaching gaps, 
and increase the chances of successful outcomes. Coulsard agreed that CXC will share with the ministries of education the broad topics for Paper 2 five weeks before the start of the examinations. However, Dr. Wayne Wesley, Registrar and Chief Executive Officer of the CXC, has cautioned it is important for teachers and students to complete the entire syllabus for their respective examinations. As it relates to the sharing of topics, while CXC will submit to all ministries of education the broad topics to be assessed on papers two, five weeks in advance of the administration of the examinations, which means on May 10th, that listing of topics will be available to the ministries of education. It must be said and indicated, all candidates must be reminded that all topics are covered in paper one for all subjects. In addition, there are certain subjects for which the details are not readily specifically available in the syllabus. We will make sure that information is provided. Of interest to young people seeking entrance into the University of the West Indies, the UWI, the university will consider their year one CAPE results. The COSOD agreed to extend the matriculation waiver UWI introduced in 2020 to allow it to consider CAPE candidates for admission based on year one results, given that the year two results were released after the start of the academic year. Minister Lloyd said the Caribbean primary exit assessment is scheduled for the 27th and 28th of May and the results can be expected by the 15th of June. The period for the online training and assessment quality audits for Caribbean vocational qualification is May to August 2021, based on agreements with individual participating territories and the ministries of education will receive the results in the last week of September. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor on March 13, 2021, commenced the VG Roads Reconstruction Project, presenting a multiplicity of benefits to both residents and road users. The scope of works includes complete reconstruction of the road surface with proper drainage and residence access. This project is funded through the Road Improvement and Maintenance Program financed by the Taiwanese government. The project duration is four months, weather permitting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Creole. Twenty twenty is a year that we do not want to revisit. It was tough, frustrating, and scary. From family to friends to coworkers and clients someone we know has been affected one way or another from this pandemic. Let us take responsibility for ourselves and the lives of those around us. On an island of 182,790 people, one life lost rocks the entire nation. So let us overcome this together. Wear a mask. Wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. Stay home and social distance. Share accurate information. Sanitize your hands frequently. Get registered for your COVID-19 vaccine today. Let us bring our society, economy, and health back to normal. Together. 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 Together, Together we can win this war. This message is brought to you by the management and staff of Invest St. Lucia. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ter, Jesse, Monsieur Madame de Patmark, qui est responsable pour l'information au gouvernement de la CGIS et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui vous a donné une nouvelle en créole. Présentez-vous, Primus Hutchinson. Sixième session du 11e Parlement, qui a point coup mardi, bon matin, le 16 en mars 2021, et qui a fait un concept qui a assemblé. À 10h, bon matin, et après ça, les représentatifs, tous les façades, à ce Parlement, avec les membres du Sénat, qui ont assemblé à une session 
uh, ensemble pour réviser la commission, uh, ben, pour recevoir la commission et le message du gouverneur général, c'est le Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack. Le comité des affaires finances, qui a été assemblé à la session, par quoi il à 10 h après-midi, ça c'est le 16 mois de mars pour 2021, pour viser l'estimation du budget pour 2021, pour 2022. Quand il y a une session le 16 mois de mars 2021 à 4 h après-midi, quand il y a même sur toutes les défenses de la une discussion avec ce qui concerne la présentation du budget, le comité des affaires finances a présenté un rapport, ça c'est un rapport aussi, de la session. Motion qui est devant le Conseil, c'est pour adopter le rapport du comité de finances à ce budget pour l'année financière 2021 pour vendre un total de 1 billion 638 millions 600 000 et 900 dollars. En considération, ce protocole-là qui est établi par les autorités de maladie coroner, ni Marc et Kyo, les membres publics n'ont pas trouvé permission pour euh, assister à session en galerie à Kaye Parlement, comme les habitudes, mais vous pouvez regarder la session en face au public à la télévision NTN, à sur YouTube et à la page Facebook gouvernement. En parlant de ça, le Premier ministre et le ministre des Affaires Finances, à cette ci honorable Alain Chasney, qui a présenté le euh, budget pour l'année 2021 pour vendre mardi bon matin le 16 en mois de mars 2021. Ça a suivi la cérémonie pour ouvrir officiellement le système de euh, session de 11 le euh, Parlement m'a dit bon matin. À côté de la public, le Parlement et la euh, Assemblée à 10h bon matin. Et le le Sénat à 10h30 bon matin. Côté euh, tous les défenseurs de la Assemblée pour recevoir le message du gouverneur général. Ça, c'est Emmanuel Neville Snack. Après le comité des affaires financières, la fin de la session. Yo, pour viser l'estimation, la affaire a commencé à 10h après-midi. Le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a posé l'estimation devant le Conseil. Mais le chicane a commencé, ça c'est mercredi le 17 en mois de mars 2021 à 9h au bon matin. En résultat de la maladie de corona, le même public n'a pas trouvé permission pour assister à la session. Comme, la, comme qui était l'habitude, mais il y a quand ça regarder ça sur la télévision NTN, et bien, page Facebook gouvernement, et bien, à sur YouTube. Bon, comment vous mettre une dernière nouvelle là um, Nous avons regardé ces diverses um, um, réservations, diverses um, ça on ne peut faire, pas faire, à bas que vous avez commencé le 17. Um, nous avons regardé les affaires business, opérations business, tout business ne peut fermer à 8 heures au soir. Et uh, ça veut dire supermarket, supermarché, restaurant, et les autres, ni pour fermer la porte à 8 pour ça faciliter que vous avez commencé à niveau à Pour les gens qui sont assemblés ensemble, à plus que 10 personnes sont assemblées dans la famille, et que uh, ni en public et privé, vous uh, avez pour limiter les contacts avec l'autre monde, et pour observer tous ces protocoles qui sont en place, pour ça préserver une à l'autre. Il y a une activité côté à chaque monde qui a assemblé parce qu'il pose un coup. Pour les institutions religieuses, euh, on peut observer ces protocoles-là aussi. Il dépend de ce qu'on a l'église ou il dépend de la quantité de monde qui est pour là. Euh, chaque le ministre, ministre de l'Égalité et le ministre de la Santé a demandé toutes ces religions. Si vous avez une activité comme le thème, le mariage, et le thème, ou pas ça n'est plus que 50 monde euh, les individus pour venir là et euh, tout les les termes et service mariage euh, c'est pas invitation seulement on est pour inviter monde pour venir à ça là et ça fait date euh, pour service quand on a été au monde il dit au pas commando pour pas publier ça encore et euh, l'autre activité qu'on a fait bateau à sous la mer Excursion avec Baye comme ça. Puisqu'il dit que les gens pour venir à ça, et que euh, la fait yot avec la famille qui nous pour avoir un bateau, euh, on est pour faire contact et puis Lighthouse là pour assurer qui qui est au calé, 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 qui est Pétrole, station pétrole, qui a vendu pétrole, restaurant et cabaret. 
c'est du un éditeur seulement on peut faire ça c'est 11h bon matin pour juste à 8h au soir et qu'on peut aller acheter et faire ça fort les restaurants qui ni les qui les sont c'est ça faire ça à bah qui réserve on peut faire ça d'une façon qui sert tout le monde on peut observer tous ces protocoles là et si vous n'avez pas de licence pour pouvoir soutenir à faire ça, vous pouvez observer le protocole là où vous avez vendu à faire comme ça. Mais je pense que si vous avez acheté et calé, et que vous avez eu tout le bagage fermé. Nous avons eu une dernière information sur l'autre nouvelle concernant l'école. Et que vous avez eu l'école qui est ouverte, 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 qui est ouverte. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons eu une nouvelle là-dessus. Mais c'est vrai que je vous remercie pour que vous regardez. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Pour jouer depuis moi, on considère qu'on se fait la vie. On va vous présenter une autre nouvelle à quoi à la présent. Donc, on va vous présenter Jesse. Merci à Peel Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now. Do stay tuned for more NTN programming. Goodbye.